The process for resealing or replacing the pump is pretty much the same. This pump is bolted to the timing cover on the driver's side of the engine and is what supplies vacuum to the brake booster. The only way I've ever seen this pump fail is by leaking either at the gasket from the pump to the timing cover or on the outer cover of the vacuum pump. And if it's failed in another way, you probably have much bigger problems than a bit of an oil leak. This pump is responsible for providing vacuum to the brake booster, which provides us the assist while braking. This pump is driven by the intake cam, so when we install it, we do have to properly line it up, but there's no concern about clocking or anything like that because if it's not lined up, it will not install. Also, I've removed the vehicle battery to do this repair. There is no need to do that for you guys. With it out, I have a little more room to give you guys a better shot of what we're doing. As you can see, there is significant oil all over this vacuum pump. Also a warning, this line right here is a coolant line. It is extremely fragile. You need to be extra careful when working in this area. Sometimes looking at it wrong will cause it to break. And if your car's hot, you'll create a geyser of coolant coming out of it. We're also in the middle of a couple other repairs, so don't mind the high pressure fuel pump being loose. The vacuum pump is held on with three bolts, one at about two o'clock, one at about nine o'clock, and one at, oh, I don't know, 4.30 or so. All three of these are T30s. Now, before removing the last bolt, I like to take the line that connects to the brake booster off. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can simply grab it at the bend right here and pull it, and that usually slides right off. The thing you need to be careful and aware of is that there's also a rubber piece that goes to this fitting that can easily stay on the pump. This is especially important if you're replacing the pump, you don't wanna leave this on the old pump. So make sure this piece goes back on the hose when you're installing it. We'll go ahead and take our third bolt out. This bolt actually holds a wire loom on as well. I usually just leave it down here with the loom and rotate it like that. Next, I like to rotate the pump back and forth and rock it out of the car. Here's our pump. You can see how covered in oil it is. And here's the O-ring that we're gonna replace. As we look inside the well where the pump rides, we'll notice a couple of things. One, you'll see a groove there at the end of the intake cam. That's what rotates the pump. Also, at the side of the cover, you can see a hole right there. That's an oil galley to make sure that the pump stays properly lubricated. If you are installing a new pump, you can skip this step. Otherwise, I like to clean it so that we're not putting this super dirty part back on it. Before we do that, we wanna tape off a couple of areas. Tape off here, and then we'll tape off the vacuum port as well. And we'll just use some simple green cleaner. You can use brake cleaner, degreaser. I like this because it actually smells pretty nice and it works really, really well. Once you feel like you got your pump as clean as you want it, let's go ahead and put our new seal on. We got our new O-ring. We'll use a little bit of clean engine oil. Take our seal, stretch it around. One more thin coat of oil. We'll put a little oil on the part that goes in the camshaft as well. You wanna make certain that the O-ring is in the groove all the way around the pump and that it fits properly. If the O-ring's too big or too small, it may not seal, so you wanna make sure you're using the right stuff. Once that's done, it's time to put it back on the car. Before we install our new pump, we wanna take a second and clean out the well where the pump's gonna go, as well as the mounting surfaces where the pump bolts. Next, we'll take a little bit of our engine oil and lubricate the well. I also like to put a little bit in the end of the camshaft we need to make sure that we line up the driven and the drive portions of the pump. So the camshaft drives the pump. This slot on the camshaft needs to line up with this slot on the pump. What I usually do is I line the pump up roughly where it's gonna go, and then I rotate the pump to get as close to alignment as I can. Here we can see the slot on the camshaft is horizontal. So we'll get our pump about the same, work our pump into place. And then if we need to rotate it to properly align it, we can do that once it's installed. Next, we'll start our bolts. For the bottom one, we need to make sure that the bracket is properly lined up. It may make it a little easier to take the harness off the retainers. We need to make sure that the bracket 
is all the way back and underneath the pump a little bit. If it's not sitting flush, it's not gonna torque down properly and that can cause an oil leak or we can actually break the pump. Once the bracket's in the proper location, go ahead and start that final T30. Go ahead and snug them down the rest of the way and finally torque them down to a whopping nine newton meters. Go ahead and put the harness back where it came from if you removed it. We also need to put our grommet back in the hose for the brake booster, slip that on. If you took the vehicle battery out, it's time to go ahead and put that back, snap your engine cover back down, start it up, double check for any weird noises, oil leaks, and double check the brake pedal and make sure that you have that assist. Questions, comments, drop them down below. Big ups to FCP Euro for partnering with me on this entire Mark V project. I'll have links to everything we use today, including the pump, down in the description. Guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.